Recently, my dog Olive started hiding under the sheets in my bed. At first, I was worried that something was wrong, but after researching, I found out that she just enjoyed being in cozy, dark places. With this knowledge about her preference for den-like spaces, I decided to make her a dog tent using some plywood, canvas, and a few 3D printed parts. After spending some time designing Infusion, this is what I came up with for the base and upper frame of the tent. I added some notches into the plywood that the white printed parts will fit into to keep everything aligned. I've started using Fusion 360 for my CNC tool pathing so I can integrate 3D prints more effectively. Previously I would design Infusion and then export DXF files to vCarve, which I was more familiar with, but keeping everything within the same program has fixed many of my issues I used to have during the import and export process due to things being lost or skewed. After cutting the plywood base and legs on the Ooze Nest Worth B CNC, I gave it a light sanding to remove the burrs created from the two flute upcut end mill I used. Then I cut the tabs to free the parts from the waste stock and began to file those down. After a quick quality check from my supervisor, What's that? filing continued. I then followed this up with another light sand to smooth the face and soften the edges. I used my outside hammer to try and hammer the legs in, but struggled to find the right angle to hit them. I then used a hockey stick on the inner flat part of the leg to hammer it securely in place. I used a pretty tight tolerance when securing the legs, so I didn't feel the need to use wood glue as I had initially intended. After the base was assembled, I was quite surprised at the strength of the half inch plywood. The plywood was able to withstand the weight of me standing on it without flexing that much. Now to cut my 8 foot dowel into 3 pieces. I used the Creality CR10 V2 with a 0.6mm nozzle and some Eson White PETG filament for the printed parts. I've been using this Eson E-Box filament dryer and it really shows in the surface finish of these parts. The larger nozzle and 0.3mm layer height coupled with the slight over extrusion ensured that these prints would be strong and durable while only taking a few hours to print. Time for assembly. Another safety meeting with my foreman. You sit. Once the dowels were inserted, I applied super glue to the base and some activator spray to the printed parts just to keep them from moving around while stretching the canvas over the frame. I draped a piece of wax canvas that I scavenged a few weeks ago over the frame and cut it roughly to size.
I then with pinned the all the fabric in place with the help of my coworker. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. And use a straight stitch to give the canvas a conical shape. After placing the fabric back on the frame, I was able to see what excess material needed to be removed around the base. I wanted the entrance of the tent to have a round opening, so I marked a center point and used the top of a stool to trace a circle. After cutting the circle out, I then sewed the edge of the opening to keep it from fraying over time. Now that everything was sewed, it was time to stretch the canvas. I placed it over the tent frame and began to staple it to the base of the tent. The tension of the stretched canvas will keep the dowel securely pressed into the 3D printed parts and add a bit of rigidity to the upper part of the tent. After stuffing one of all his favorite blankets in the tent, it was time for the final inspection. It's definitely olive approved, and it looks like I get to keep my job as dog dad for now. <laughs>